I don't know if you're uh, into FXX, but th- there is a uh, really great, very smart uh, comedian who is the featured show on the uh, new FXX channel. Uh, and this guy is, uh, he is handsome, he is intelligent, he is articulate, and he is very biased. Please welcome W. Kama Bell. <laughs> I was sure you were about to introduce Chris Rock, but I'll, I'll talk. Well, you know, no offense to you, I'd much rather have Chris Rock as a guest, but, uh, you know, oh, I'm nice. stuck with you, dude. Really what am I going to do? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Hey, yeah, seriously. I'd much rather be talking to Chris Rock. <laughs> I, know, I know. See, so we're even, okay? You know, back off. Hey, uh, seriously, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, I am a big fan of yours. You are uh, you are just doing great on this thing. This is The show is in the second season now, but you're, you're going four nights a week. Am I correct? Yeah, we our second, the first season, I guess, went well enough. They thought, how can we torture him? <laughs> yeah. But now it's, uh, it was once a week, and now it's four nights a week. Yeah, well, that's five great. nights a week, but the fifth show is the best stuff show. Yeah, well, that's that, that's to keep the budget down. Yeah, yeah exactly. They just lock, yeah, they just lock me in the studio and say, keep saying funny things. Yeah, and we'll just keep we'll keep taping. Yeah, and we'll edit them and put together some kind of a show for a dollar three eighty on Friday nights. Uh, you, by, by the way, you are in New York City uh, tonight. That's where the show is being done. Where, whereabouts in New York is the show done? It's done uh, in uh, on the East Side, thirty seventh and fifth, I think. I don't know New York well enough to know what that neighborhood is, but yeah, thirty seventh and fifth in Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah, so, man. yeah. Yeah. Not too far from Let's the U. Hello. Yeah, you're by the UN there, aren't you? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, our, yeah. Our, our show was totally screwed up the week that uh, Barack was in town for the UN. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. world peace is great, but don't screw up the comedy show. Yeah, I know, man. It, you, listen, you got to come to LA when he comes yeah. over to George Clooney's house yeah. for a party. LA shuts down two days. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, please, no bitching and moaning from your part. We, we all suffer when the president comes into town. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, the, the, <laughs> Let's do a little bit, uh, just to set up with our Hollywood uh, Headliners audience. Uh, y- you are originally from the West Coast. You're a Bay Area guy? Yeah, I mean, I lived, I lived there for 15 years. I was born there, but I didn't stay there that long. But yeah, I lived there for 15 years uh, in San Francisco and Oakland. But uh, I've, I've lived all over the country. I'm one of those people. Why? Is it, were you an were you Army family or a service family or something? No, my mom just had opinions, and it would occasionally say, time to move. <laughs> we moved around a lot. <laughs> I had one of those black moms that had a lot of opinions, and occasionally we, had, we were chased out of town. Yeah. You know, oh, well, but that, you had the same type of mom, Rob, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and, but that's, I've met his mom, and you're very close. But that's how you got, that's how you probably formulated a lot of your opinions, right? Yeah, I mean, I've lived, you know, I've lived in the South. I've lived in Boston. I've lived in the, on the West Coast. I mean, haven't spent too much time in the in the uh, Southwest. But yeah, I've lived all over the country, so I kind of I kind of feel like I have, I, you know, I've observed a lot of Americans. <laughs> I have opinions about that. <laughs> I love it. Come on, your your show's called Totally Biased, and if if our fans uh, haven't checked out, come on on uh, YouTube. There's a lot of your great clips. Uh, that really give you an idea of what the show is about, but there, there's a. It's got to be very comforting to you coming on the show every week and just knowing you get to be as biased as you want, dude. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was doing that before they put TV cameras in front of me, but it's great to be able to to do it for a wider audience. So yeah, it's uh, you know, there's you know, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> like the thing about comedy is that you do stand up comedy because you don't want a day job, and if you're lucky and successful enough, they give you a day job. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm happy to do it. When did you know, by the way, that you were going to be a comedian? When did that happen for you in your life? I mean, I think I was a kid. I think I saw you know, like Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live, and. I guess I'll sign call on the Tonight Show, and I'm an I was I'm an only child, so I was like on stage by yourself talking. That seems like a good gig. <laughs> yeah. And when did you know that you were really good at it? Uh, when FX said, "Do you want to do a TV show?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Up until that point, I was looking to quit. But yeah. yeah. When and when Chris Rock said, "I want to produce a show with you," and FX said, "Would you like to do a TV show on our network?" That's when I thought, "Hey, man, I'm getting pretty good at this." <laughs> and what is your connection with uh, Louis C.K.? Uh, we're both humans. Yes, that's true. <laughs> one's white, one's black. Our W two both say our W two both our W two both say stand up com- comedian on them. I think that's it. I've met him a couple times. He's a great dude. He's really cool. But I haven't. I don't actually hang out with him. But is time. is is your is there a producer or someone associated with your show and his show? Is there some kind of connection there? 
I mean, I mean, Chris Rock is our executive producer, and him and Louie are really good friends. I think that's a... Uh, and then uh, one of our other producers, Chuck Sklar, has played Osama bin Laden on Louis C.K. <laughs> on Louis show on FX. So I think that's about it. So it's basically a poker club getting together and doing another television show. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I'm just the, I'm just one of the pieces on the in the in the poker game. I love it. All right. <laughs> so apparently, come on. Chris won me. When you guys book a guest, what's the, what's sort of the philosophy of of the show, and and you know what kind of guest do you want to have on? I mean, for me, it's all about somebody you can have a good conversation with. You know, the, you know, it's, it's obviously it's great when they're famous because people like famous people. But you know, we've had I've had a good conversation with Don Cheadle. He was on the show. We had Tracy Morgan. He was on the show. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, to me, it's just about somebody where we can have a little bit of a back and forth. Me and Sarah Silverman were just on the show recently, and we had a little. You know, I had called. I had uh, said mean things about her years ago, and we had to <laughs> resolve them on my television show. Hey, so maybe cool. you get what? Well, maybe you can get Kanye West on too, and and Kimmel. Get all those guys going. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Maybe I can. Maybe I can help broker their truth. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we've been. <laughs> we can come uh, sit down on my show. We've been trying uh, for weeks here to get those guys on here, and they're just a couple of blocks away from us. So you know, good luck if you get them. I'm going to be yeah, really yeah. envious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems like Jimmy Kimmel has that on lock. He seems to know what he's doing. Now, when someone comes on, uh, you, you know, this is always part of the. Uh, I guess this goes back to Carson. You know, when Carson used to have guests on they would have to work with a producer before they came on the show and they talk about their bits and they kind of get their bits set up. And, and so when they would come out on Carson, and I think it's sort of held true for Leno and probably Letterman and all those guys, you know, how much are, are your guests prepped before they get on the set with you? Well, I mean, you know, I think they, they did establish a model with Carson that with some people, it depends. Like when I'm talking to like a comic like Sarah Silverman or Hannibal Burris, we have sort of an outline, but also because they're funny on their feet, you can sort of veer off that outline. Yeah. But with, you know, with a standard guest on a talk show, they're not used to talking live on camera in front of people. So they, you know, sometimes people do want, they actually like the fact that there's a little bit of a structure to it. Yeah. So yeah. that they can, because uh, otherwise that, you know, that bright red light gets really bright if you, if you forget what you're talking about. Well, and I'm glad you're talking about this. But one of the things we try to do on this show is talk about really how Hollywood honestly works and, and or show business and, uh, you know, what, what the components really are. What was the biggest um, sort of surprise or what was the toughest thing you had to learn about being a host of a show as opposed to being a stand-up comedian? Well, I think that's the, the, you know, you sort of said it. The toughest thing that I learned was how to be the host of a show. That was not something I ever sort of aspired to be. Like, I wanted to be a comedian, and I am a comedian. But when you're hosting a show, you have to put all the different segments together. You have to sort of keep the trains moving. You have to know when to sort of hand the uh, hand the uh, baton over to somebody else. You run with it now. And, you know, also in those conversations with people on the couch or in the chairs as we do it, you have to sort of realize that, well, my job is to make them look good. It's yeah. My job isn't to be necessarily funnier than them. It's just to, I can be funny, but it's also to set them up so that they look good. You know, last night on our show, uh, or last week on our show, we talked about Alec Baldwin is going to start a new thing on MSNBC as the host. And he's starting because he said, you know, all the interviews he's, he's ever been involved in, the, the questions are sort of boring, and you can tell people are kind of phoning it in. So he's, he's trying to start his own thing. You got any advice for, uh, for Alec on his new show? <laughs> uh, maybe try not to have such a short uh, temper. <laughs> if, uh, if a talk show host blows up at his guest, that probably won't go well after the first couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a big Alec Baldwin fan. I'm going to tune in. I, I'd love to be on that show. But yeah, I think it's a lot more work than it looks like from the outside. I mean, I sort of sat there and watched people have those talk show conversations, and you're like, why is this so stiff? And then once you're on the inside, you go, oh, because the person they're talking to isn't good at this conversation. Also, I don't know what his show is like. On our show, these conversations have happened in six minutes. So in a six-minute conversation, if you get too far off topic, it becomes really hard for the editors to put together. Yeah, you're kind of screwed. So you, your job, I, I've always said that a, a host of a show is kind of, he's the guy that's got to drive the train. He's got to be in front of the camera, but he also has to have a little producer in him. So he's got to know, you know, am I on track? He's got to have a little director in him. Is the guy looking at the right camera? He's got to have a little floor director in him. I mean, he's got to be kind of everything all of a sudden instantly. Do you find that to be the case? Yeah, no, that's absolutely the case. And like I said, I came from, you know, as a comic, you get to go on stage for an hour and you get to sort of, whether it goes good, bad, or indifferent, it's all, it's all on you at the end of the night and everybody knows that. But, you know, when you're hosting a show, you have to you're holding a little bit of everybody's job, but also you're not holding enough that you can actually. Sometimes you have to listen to other people, and they say, "Cut." You go, "But I oh, I should just cut because this guy told me to cut." <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. 
so there's, you know, or also you understand that there's way more, you know, if you're, if the lighting guy isn't happy, then you're not going to be seen. So you have to make sure that you keep that guy happy. You know, and there's a lot more involved than just talking. A lot of freaking components, you know, uh, and the other thing that happens, and of course it's been happening here to Andy now since he's been the sidekick on Hollywood Headliners. Uh, you know, people are starting to recognize him. In fact, he got a, a small order of free fries at McDonald's a couple of weeks ago because someone recognized him off the show. Uh, yeah, it's a tough life. Nice. Yeah, I, 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 had, I had a free Starbucks coffee the other day, so, you know. <laughs> okay. Membership has its benefits. Yeah, absolutely. What's, uh, what's happening to your life now that, A, you got the show, and, B, people are starting to recognize you more and more? Uh, you know, so I mean, it's funny. The since the show is four days a week, and we're there every day and working twelve, fifteen hour days, I'm not actually outside that much. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> oh. My life hasn't really changed that dramatically. <laughs> but uh, when I am outside and I do see people, you know, it's it's great to be. When people recognize you in New York and excited to see you, you know that means something because they can just keep walking because it's a thousand, thousands, and thousands of people, millions of people in the city. Yeah. So when people approach me and say they like the show, I really appreciate it because you know we're still new. And I need to reward them for being excited because you know we need to, we're still we're still building the machine here. Yeah, they say if a New Yorker runs into a uh, a celebrity in New York, they say, "Get out of the way." <laughs> Who's been your best? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I respect when they don't say that because they must really like the show. <laughs> yeah. Who's been your uh, best guest so far? Uh, my best guest so far. Uh, we've had a lot of good ones. I mean. Uh, Famous, like when we had Don Cheadle on the show, that was really fun. Mm-hmm. We had a lot, we had a really good back and forth, and he was ready to play, which is always fun. Yeah. Like you're saying, we can get out of the boring conversation. It's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, we had a woman named Christina Wong who is not famous, but came on the show preparing to throw down, and really like, I think it was her first talk show appearance, and she really did a great job. It's on YouTube; people can see it. You know, when people come to play, they also come to sort of make their own fun. That's when the interviews are the best. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really the best part of our whole business, I think, is when someone is ready to tune in and, and be with you. And, you know, we've, we've had so many guests on this show that are – it is nice that they've got some time, uh, you know, to kind of goof off on this show. I mean, we're, you know, we're almost an hour long, so if they want to just tell long, boring stories, we're, you know, we're just <laughs> pleased to have them here. We're there for you. Yeah, absolutely. How did <laughs> – how did you meet Chris Rock, by the way? Is that a hint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah you're, you're like, oh, man, I need some vitamin B12. We got come on Bell on again, man. Let's get it. No, how did you meet Chris Rock? Uh, I was doing a, a show in New York at the UCB Theater. Uh, there's the sketch theater. And I was performing my one-minute show. And Chris Rock, had, I knew he had heard about me from other people, but uh, I didn't know he would be in the audience. And then he was in the audience. And uh, I didn't know that until after the show. And after the show was over, I was standing backstage, and he was backstage dressed in black like it was the Matrix, and <laughs> told me that I was funny. And he dropped the he dropped the smoke bomb and disappeared. Wow. <laughs> and called me like two months later, saying he wanted to do a show with me. Cool, very cool. Wow, that, I mean that's a big that's a big big. Well, you know, like he, I just have to say, my my first impression with you uh, it, when I first saw you is, you know, you're you're obviously very bright and very articulate, and uh, I I appreciate that. It means people are putting thought into you know what they do and how they come across. And I think that makes a big difference. Uh, you, you as a stand-up comedian, and this is a one other thing that we talk about on this show a lot. You know, there are real ups and downs in our business, and as a stand-up man, you got to face a lot of downs. How have you gotten through it yeah. when when it's really been tough on you when when you just feel like oh man it it's not happening how have you gotten yourself through that You know it is hard I you know I I certainly I think for me you know this is, I I I, kept, I would constantly reevaluate you know is there anything else in my life that I think I could do that would make me as happy as the happiest I am as a stand up and the answer is always no so even when it's and even when it's bad, you go, This is really bad, maybe I should quit but then I go, Well what else would I do that would give me any percentage of the happiness that I have that stand up gives me when it's good? And I couldn't and I never could think of anything else. So, you know, I think that's the thing as a stand up you have to constantly be re- especially when you haven't made it, whatever that means, you have to constantly sort of look at yourself and really be honest with, Am I making forward progress? Is this year better than last year? Uh, am I getting better? And I think if you can evaluate yourself honestly in that way, then you can go, okay, if I'm still moving forward and it's still making me happy, it's happiest times, then I'll keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, certainly. 
I think if I had if I had other job skills, <laughs> I would be so I'd be the funny guy in accounting. Well, you know, uh, the, the, but but your passion is what you're doing, and you're uh, and you're hitting it right on the dinger, as they say right now. Well, I'm, we're working on it. Thank yeah, you. but just keep your dinger to yourself. That's all I can tell you. All right? Hey, uh, come on, thank you. Uh, we want everybody to check out the show. It's uh, totally biased. It's on <clears throat> FXX. With W. Kama Bell, thank you so much for joining us on Hollywood Headliners. We really appreciate it. Best of luck to you, and keep it going, man, all right? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, come on. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right, we'll be right back with more of Hollywood Headliners in just a second. Don't go away.